Divine Truth Events These are events and presentations by Jesus and Mary. This presentation is part of the general discussion series, and it is a question and answer session from people in San Diego. Presented by Jesus on the 3rd of November 2013 in San Diego, California, USA. This is session 2, part 1. I had a question on law of attraction, uh, personal law of attraction versus, you know, group law of attraction. You know, I'm, I'm assuming when an airplane crashes, everybody on the airplane didn't attract that event. And, and just how those things kind of connect. Did you say everyone in the airplane did attract the event? Didn't. didn't you know, I wouldn't think so. Oh, I mean, okay. I don't know. That's did it happen to them? Yeah, it did happen to them. So okay. They attracted them. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's part yeah. of it. And yeah. So if we look at an airplane crash, yes, every single person on that airplane attracted that event. And not only every single person on the airplane, every single person that hears about the event and every single person that was affected by the death of their loved ones in the event are also have also attracted the event. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, it sure cleared it up for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, in a presentation I did in Melbourne in, I think it was 2009 or something, or 10, um, one lady asked me about uh, law of attraction events involving rape. And I outlined on the board all of the connecting effects of a single rape. Does that make sense? And who actually attracted the event right down to the person who watched or heard about the event on telly. Because if you even hear about the event occurring, you've attracted that event. You understand? Yeah. You, there's a part of you that is unhealed that attributed or, or contributed to the attraction of that event. We don't understand on earth how much we are linked together. We don't understand at all. What we think is that we're some kind of individual walking through the world without any effect on anybody else, and that's not true at all. We have complete interconnectivity between all people, right? So every event that occurs that you hear about or see or notice, even if you notice it six months later or 12 months later or two years later or something that you read about from 100 years ago is a law of attraction event. These are all ways for us to see what is inside of ourselves and deal with it. Does that make sense? And that's the beauty of what God does. What myself and Mary do is we assume everything that happened is our attraction. Now, that's not to say that many of these events, um, we, see them, we see them generally, the average person sees them as very negative events. And we don't see them as a negative comment about our personal um, condition. We see them as a comment about our personal condition. Can you see the difference? Like, if you see them as a negative comment about your personal condition all the time, you obviously are coming from the perspective that there must be something wrong with you that created the event. But there can also be things that are right with you that created the event. Even an event which is like a crash or where somebody dies, there could be something right with you that creates those events. Uh -huh. So it's far better, to, far better than seeing whether they're right or wrong. The better thing to do is to ask ourselves, well, what inside of me participated in this event? The fact that I've heard about it or been a part of it or my loved one has been a part of it or I was in the event, so in the spirit world even, after I've passed, I'd go, okay, I died from an air crash. I obviously attracted that event, somehow. Does that make sense? So if I was a spirit now, who died from the event, I'd be going, I want to have a look at what caused this event, what inside of me might have contributed to this event. And a lot of what's inside of us can be all sorts of things that, that we don't consider at the time. Things like our concepts about science can contribute to an event. 
our belief systems that are false about science, for example, can contribute to an event that eventually kills you. Our desire when we were a child to have accidents in order to get approval and attention and feelings from our parents, which we didn't get unless we had an accident. That can contribute immensely to an accident. Does that make sense? There are all sorts of attitudes and feelings ranging from belief systems about the world right the way through to personal emotions that we want fulfilled ourselves that can create any event. And if we're really open about it, what we will do is we allow the, the event is, has occurred and we just let ourselves feel about what happened. Does that make sense? Yeah. So sometimes nowadays, to give you an illustration personally, I order equipment frequently. You know, obviously we share a lot of uh, you know, electronics equipment to other people around the world in order to distribute the divine truth that we're pre presenting. So, so we order, I order, almost every week I'm ordering something, you know, and usually it's quite a lot of things, you know, where, where we might buy 10 discs at a time or 20 discs at a time to back up data or, you know, all sorts of things might come. It's very unusual for me now to actually receive something that's faulty. Does that make sense? Now, I had a spate two weeks before we left uh, home where every single thing I ordered that week was faulty. It arrived faulty. Now, it's interesting because I wouldn't have thought it before then, but I had to go out and, and yell and scream a bit outside because I was angry about the fact that everything I'd ordered <laughs> that week was faulty. And I had to go outside and have a good yell and scream about it before I could connect anything emotionally about it. Does that make sense? And the irony was, this particular week, every single person that I tried to contact to fix the problem would not respond to me. They would not respond to me. I tried to phone them, they wouldn't respond. I tried to email them, they wouldn't respond. Like, and we were, like, a week later, we're going overseas for six weeks. It was like, all of this gear was going to have to be sent back, but they wouldn't even tell me how to send it back. They wouldn't tell me anything. Right? So I had to go out and yell about that a fair bit outside as well. <laughs> Does that make sense? The fact that every person was ignoring me was what came up for me emotionally. They were just ignoring it. And then uh, it was interesting too with the events, because with all of these events, because I had a strong feeling that the people who sent the guilds to me actually knew that they were faulty before they sent them. In Australia, I don't know if that happens here, sometimes they'll do that and then when they get it sent back, they'll blame it on the freight insurance and therefore they're able to claim the fault as a freight write-off, you know, insurance write-off. And sometimes they'll do that purposefully in order to get the insurance money for that particular piece of goods, knowing full well that they broke it before they sent it. And the reason why I suspected that was because many of the packages had been pre-opened, which is pretty unusual. Most times we get things like you do here, all wrapped up and closed up and, you know, no one's pre-opened it. So I had to go out and feel about that. <laughs> the fact that they knew in advance that it was faulty and they just did it for the sake of their own, like, Expedience, really, their own like, desire to rip off the insurance. So how to feel about that. So already I'm up to three processes out of this. <laughs> right? And then we started trying to resolve the issues, didn't we? Babe? And then Mary felt so sorry for me by this day that she started helping me resolve some of the issues. But because we were starting to get pretty close. Now, usually before we go away, we've got a lot of work to do. Like, there's a lot of work copying, you know, get editing data and everything. So we, by the time we've got away, we're up to date with all of those things. So, so usually the week before we go away is really very, very, very busy for me in particular. So Mary starts helping me try to chase it down. For Mary, it all goes smoothly. I had to go out and feel about that as well. <laughs>
But, but the one thing I do see, that it, the fact that I had to go out and feel about it was, and now I'm pretty sensitive to what it triggers, of course, but the fact that I had to go out and feel about it means that the events were my attraction. Does that make sense? They were what I attracted. And I had to work my way through the different feelings that got created as well. As it turned out, we resolved all of the events the day that we travelled. Right? But I feel that if I didn't process at least some emotion during that week, it's highly likely I would have had to actually accept all of those goods that we ordered as faulty and just take them to the dump. Because none of them worked at all. And if I hadn't processed some emotion, we wouldn't have even got a response from any of these people before we went away. And of course, by the time we come back, they would have all said, it's too late now. So it would have all been written off. Yeah. Can we be unloving to plants or inanimate objects in the process of processing our emotions? Of, of course. Not so much to inanimate objects, but certainly to living objects like plants and animals and all sorts of insects, creatures. Where you, you, honestly, what do you do when an insect, when a mosquito lands on you? Bang, bang most people, right, um, would do that. That's being unloving to a, a law of attraction event that you actually drew to yourself. Now, I can understand why you do it, because you're angry. Right? Isn't it? Would, would you kill anything if you weren't angry? Probably not, right? So you must be angry. If it were, or you might be afraid, but either way, you, you killed it. So it's a response. It's a law of attraction event. And the fact that your body drew that insect to you and that insect was willing to bite you is an indication that there's something inside of you that's open to that. Now, it doesn't mean there's something negative inside of you necessarily. It could be, when I say negative, it doesn't mean that you know, you're a terrible, bad person because of it. it could be just simple that you don't have a good opinion of yourself. Something like that. And that causes insects to bite you. Does that make sense? So, and in fact, if you put all the people who get bitten by insects very frequently together, and you put all the people who don't get bitten by insects frequently together, and then you analysed psychologically their feelings about themselves, you know what you would find? That all the people who get bitten by insects actually have poor self-worth. So you could actually choose to have the insect land on you and, you and watch what it does, you know. And then you could go, okay, if it's just crawling over me and, and then flies off, well, that's one response. If it lands on you and bites you, that's another response. You see, and all of these events are attractions that are occurring in your soul. They're, they're all things you attracted. It's happening to you. It's not because insects want to eat, drink blood that they cause to bite you. It's because you are open to somebody sucking your blood. Right? And then if you look at your life, you go, yeah, but basically I'm open to people doing that too, pretty much. Like, not from a literal sense, but from a vampire sense of sucking my time, sucking my energy, sucking my life out of me. And a lot of times that's driven by a lack of worth. Now, the average person would respond angrily to that. So if somebody sucked your life out of you, you get all upset and you go, oh, that person, I don't want to spend any more time with them. What I'll do is I'll create some boundaries so that they don't you know, spend time with me. And we, we, we intellectually create these boundaries, say so you can't spend any more time. But what we've got to do also is feel about these things. Why do these things happen to us? They happen because there's an emotion inside of us that we're not addressing. That's why they happen to us. So if we analyse the law of attraction, and I've given many talks about the law of attraction, but I don't know if I've ever actually given a complete talk about the law of attraction, because almost everyone gets very, very confronted about the law. <laughs> And, and so what we find happening is everybody goes off on tangents about it and I, and I never get to present all the information I want to about the law itself. 
But the law of attraction is a law of love. Because remember, every law that God created is based around love. So the insect biting you is a loving way to inform you about your soul condition. It's far better than a person biting you or a dog biting you, isn't it? An insect biting you is a much mi a minor event, is it not? Although sometimes we might think not. But each one of these laws are a loving law. And what God does constantly is all of God's laws are constantly being loving to us, trying to show us what's going on in our life, trying to demonstrate to us what the problem is inside of our soul. Now, the problem might not be how we treat other people, although often we, it is about that. So there are usually two or three, or shall we list all four, things that we need to consider with our problems with regard to the law. The law of attraction is going to expose, number one, how others treat others and how we feel about it. Does that make sense? So in other words, you're watching something on telly. It's about something going on in Africa. It's about, let's say, something that we saw recently, and that's certainly our law of attraction because we can, we're working on certain issues in areas, and my, I am about sexual abuse and stuff like that regarding a, women, a woman getting abused. And what happened was we, we just read a newspaper article and the, the article, I think it was, in, it was in the news, but it was on, I think it was on, a, on the internet, wasn't it? And, and the article, I think, said something like 75% of Kenyan girls will be raped by the time they are, I think it was 14 years of age. Right? And it said that uh, some 99 point something percent of them will not be educated any longer than one year. Something like that. I forget the exact statistic. Now Mary and I are reading it. Right? What does that tell me? There's a feeling that I and Mary need to deal with about that statistic. Does that make sense? There's got to be something going on inside of us that has drawn this piece of information to us which is an outrage, really. So there's a, it might be anger first that you feel about it. Then you might feel some fear about it personally, about, you know, and sadness about it. And if we reflect on our personal lives, like quite some bad things happened to us in the first century, both to myself and Mary in regard to abuse. And so we have to feel about those things a bit more, obviously. Otherwise, we wouldn't have attracted any information about that event that would affect us at all. So... Firstly, it's about how others treat others and how we feel about that. The law of attraction is there to help us come to terms with that. Right. The second, what do you think the second one might be? How others treat us and how we feel about that. What do you think the third one might be? How we treat others and what we and they feel about that. And what do you think the fourth one, fourth one might be? I treat myself. Now, I'm going to reorder these in terms of our preference. Because that's not the order that we prefer to deal with these issues in. What would be the order, do you think, of how we prefer to, tr to deal? Reverse the last two. Four is one, you reckon? Let's talk about it a bit. 
how many of us believe there is any of our emotions involved in that event? If we're honest with ourselves. How many of us actually feel that there's any of our personal emotions involved in that event? Do you feel it's your fault that event occurred? No. How many of you think it's your fault that event occurred? Or something in your soul that caused the event to occur? Yeah, you're not being honest with yourself, honestly. You were doing it just earlier, that's why you asked the question, right? Yeah. So this is what we don't understand. Almost every question you ask about what others did to other people is complete ignorance about your own participation in the event, pretty much. In fact, to me, this, this is what we prefer to believe. We prefer to believe... It, this is distancing ourselves from it. So, so our preference of seeing things, in other words, our openness to truth, if we look at it from our openness to truth, we are more willing to talk about those events than we are about anything else. You look at your society, isn't that not true? You're more willing to discuss all the things happening all around the world, in what's happening in your own country, what's happening in your own community, before you discuss anything about what happened to yourself <laughs> and your own f- personal faults. You want to examine the faults of the world before you examine your own faults. Does that make sense? The average person does this, do they not? Examine the faults of the world before they examine their own faults and their own participation in the faults of the world. So that we, we actually have a preference to do that, I feel. In terms of, not as an analytical perspective, but rather from a perspective of, I don't have to deal with something in that. In other words, we, we prefer that from a perspective of denial. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? We prefer to talk about events in the world so that we can deny any participation of our own in them. And the average person does this. The average person goes, oh, isn't it terrible what happened over there? And we're... You know, we go on merrily with our lives. We don't have any personal reflection, generally, that there is something wrong with what happened over there because of something we did. Or some emotion, more importantly, some emotion that's inside of us that caused it or created it. Do you follow that? So generally, I find what most people prefer to do is talk about those events. They talk about them. They do nothing about them, generally. But they talk about them. Mary's all projecting at me as well. You don't agree with me, but that's fine. <laughs> when Mary does that, it's like so off-putting for me. It's like the other half of my soul, what's going on now? Jeez. <laughs> but how others treat others is something we generally talk about without analysing our own part in. How others treat us, we're pretty hot on, aren't we? You treated me badly. No, that's it. You treated me badly. That's it. Sometimes we even think that when someone's treated us nicely, it's badly. You know, like you often see this in a in a relationship. The husband wants to express sexual sexual feelings towards his wife. She says, "That's bad. Don't do that. You're being demanding, or whatever." Uh, She thinks it's bad. But when it actually might be good, you know, it's nice to have somebody interested in you sexually, actually, if you think about it, unless you have certain fear or certain anger about it, it would be quite a nice feeling. Okay, so how others treat us, we have a tendency to deal with probably more readily. In fact, and we have an openness to discuss it generally, don't we? In fact, if you think about it, you probably discuss it pretty frequently that person you know like what Danny did to me the other day I have to tell you about it I have to share it you know I find this happens to me quite frequently where you know I say something to somebody do you know what AJ said to me <laughs> and like it goes worldwide on forums and stuff you know like <laughs> what I what I said 
And a lot of times it's not what I said, but, you know, and sometimes it's tempting. Oftentimes we have a recording of what I actually said, and if you compare the recording to what they claim I said, it's quite often quite different. But it was their interpretation of what I said, and they think I've treated them badly, and so that's where it gets uh, how others treat us. We're really intent on dealing with that. But then I feel, personally, that these two are usually reversed. We are usually happy to start looking at how badly we treat ourselves. And in fact, in the Western world, this would probably come into the higher priority order even, because we become self-involved quite frequently, and so we're only interested in how we treat ourselves. And we're very insular, we don't even see how what we do affects anybody else. And this is very common. And sometimes we're willing to feel about what we do, um, Sometimes we're willing to feel about what we do in terms of our soul that allows this treatment of ourselves to occur. Whether that treatment be poor treatment or treatment where we believe we're superior to others. And in fact, I feel, I feel that the, there's two primary issues. There is poor treatment of myself or poor self-opinion. Or you could say poor self-worth. Or we have an inflated self-opinion, where we believe we get it and nobody else does. Right. Both of those are treating ourselves badly, actually, from God's perspective. But usually we see that one as treating ourselves badly and that one as us having self-love. And it's not having self-love. If you have self-love, you don't sacrifice your love of self. You don't sacrifice the love of others for the love of self. In other words, the love of others and the love of the self are balanced, they're, they're identical. You honour another person's will as much as you honour your own, not more or less. The person who has a poor self-opinion honours other people's will more than their own. The person who has an inflated self-opinion honours their own will more than others. If you truly love, you would do neither. You would have the same opinion of your own desires as the desires of others you would have the same feelings associated with them. But we don't want to address those issues, generally. But the last issues that we want to feel about generally are how we affect others. Or let's make it more personal, how I treat others. I find the biggest amounts of denial and ignorance generally revolve around this area. Right. How we treat others. We, we believe we treat others good and generally other people don't treat us good. <laughs> That's what we have a tendency to believe. And we're not willing to, in particular, to feel about these things. In other words, this, see this one here is a lot about repentance. In other words, it's the way that we treat others that causes the most damage to our soul generally. And in fact, it's the way these two things and this one here that causes the majority of damage to our soul. Now, the majority of people don't believe that. The majority of people believe that it's the second one that causes the majority of damage to your soul. This one here. My pen's just... No, it's working. No one's going to run out. Does that make sense? The majority of us feel that how others treat us caused all of our soul damage. And then when I talk about, you know, you're brought up in an environment, you're brought up in a family, and you're brought up, and what happens before the age of seven often determines the rest of your life. And most of us then feel that that's what is causing most of our soul damage then. And so this gives us someone else to blame, right? Doesn't it? It gives us a lot of... We can say it's always mum and dad or it's always our environment or our school teachers or whatever who created all of our damage. But it's actually not. 
what they create, created was a fertile ground for us to choose to be unloving to others. But we still had to make a choice. We had to deny that we were being unloving to others and we had to remain ignorant that we were being unloving to others. So we had to make those two choices. And then we had to choose to actually do unloving things to other people and make that choice too. We had to choose to impose their, our addictions upon other people. So we had to make that choice as well. All right? And this is what we eventually do. We, we, we think that this is our main problem when our main problem is the rest of it. How we treat other people, how we treat ourselves, and how we allow others to treat others without feeling about it at all. These are our primary issues of love. Now, any person who focuses on these three things in their life on earth and works their way through that, they, they will eventually get to a lot of the emotions associated with this anyway. Because they will have to go through repentance, which will trigger a lot of these emotions of how others treated you. You'll have to go through forgiveness of yourself, right? which will also help you to forgive others. And you'll have to go through the awareness process of self-responsibility of what's inside of ourselves and how that harms other people, which is that one. You'll go through that eventually. And the law of attraction, this law of love, is there to help you with all of those things. But as I say, the majority of people don't look at those things. They only look at that with the law of attraction. That's all they look at. Can you see when you close down all the rest and you only look at how others have treated you with the law of attraction, you're pretty much cutting off at least three quarters of your own development. Everyone's very quiet about this subject. Can you feel also, whenever you go quiet, can you feel the spirit influence upon you as well can you feel that because the energy not only of yourself goes down but also th the whole group seems to go down so there's obviously something going on isn't there under those circumstances what do you think is happening when I talk about these issues what do you think is happening any ideas if we come down here um there's an evoking of divine truth for myself as far as that essence coming in. So there's some truth coming to us mm -hmm. now. But what is it truth about? It's a personal truth, isn't it, that we're having to reflect upon now. It's a lot easy. It's easy to talk about other stuff. But when it starts talking about oh, how am I, what, how do I react in my life, now we start getting, whoa... It's getting a bit heavy. Right? Isn't that what happens? And many of us start feeling guilt. We start feeling like we've got a bad conscience about things that have sometimes that have happened in our past start coming in. And then, of course, there's a whole heap of spirits who are in places they don't want to be in and they want everything else other than themselves to be the reason why they're there. And most of us in our personal life have the same feeling, don't we? We want everything, if something bad is happening in our life, we want to blame everything other than ourselves. And if something good is happening in our life, we want to say it was all because of ourselves. <laughs> Isn't that how we are? We, this is a ethical, this is something that we've discussed in a number of, with a number of people with, on our trip. Our internal ethics are often flawed. What we do generally, is when it comes to our ethics, we say that anything good that happens in our life happened because I attracted it. <laughs> and we say that anything that was bad, well, let's define bad as painful, so let's rub out bad and call it painful that happened in our life, happened because... Somebody else did it to me. Yeah. 
This is what we do. And when this starts getting exposed, we start getting very quiet about the situation. We don't want to come face to face with our own unethical and oftentimes immoral behaviour. What we want to do instead is we want to see, no, it's all somebody else. It's all what other people did to me. And what I notice a lot of people doing when they hear divine truth initially and they hear my statements of how our, a lot of our injuries get created, they start going, that's all my mum and dad. I can see that. Now I've got someone to blame. Isn't it wonderful? I've got someone to blame. I can blame them for the rest of my life now. Right? And all we're doing there is focusing on how others have treated us. And we're ignoring how we've made decisions out of harmony with love and how we have addictions that are out of harmony with love and how we treat other people. We're ignoring all of that. We're, we're running away from all of that. We're ignoring what comes to our, through our law of attraction to ourselves to expose those things even. 